Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Dang and Ropa. I totally was super mean and left you guys off on a cliffhanger. Sorry, not sorry. But anyways, we headed off to Kyoko, or with Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... Back to the room. Okay. The girl's locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom. What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. A third time? We're really checking her body. The entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Oh, no. No, 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 no. You sit in the furthest corner that you can be in and will handle it. You don't do anything. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way. It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything. It's just based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. Sakura. What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay. Here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief pair prayer, Sakura began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What does this mean? What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This, this girl is... Is what? Is a boy. Oh my! What? So she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. Oh my gosh. Our interactions make a little bit more sense now, but there was no way to make those assumptions. Because you just meet them as who they are. You don't meet them as who they were. Whoa. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. And it's really true? Chihiro was a guy? Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat. Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy. Then he was a cross dresser? So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Whoa. Ahem. I do apologize for keeping you waiting. I'm... Now then. Let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. 
Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think that Chihiro is actually a guy, the thought had never crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boy's locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boy's locker room, and was then later moved to the girl's locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girl's locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boy's locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but... Yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! Why are we using the word titillating here? Oh my god, that's a... I get it! I get the word, and it... Ugh, oh, titillating. I need to know what that... Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever, we still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya's the killer? Well, no. without a doubt, Byakuya's the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But, but I, I think he might not actually be the killer after all. They gave it to us, but I don't think so either. But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but it's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well... I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. You're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? If Byakuya didn't, if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who really murdered Chihiro? The killer's a guy. 
the crime since the crime scene was in the boys' locker room, you would need a boys' handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook was apparently broken, the killer would have had to be used one of their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But there's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. Celeste's account, maybe? We'll go to that first. There a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No, that's wrong. I, it's, I literally wasn't... Okay, apparently... I, what I said was not wrong. Someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes. I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. Track jacket and a duffel bag. But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much, enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. <laughs> what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. S seriously <laughs> Who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? Quiet. You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Has the cleaning duty changed yet? Because two pieces like that being gone. Easy for you to say. But fine. Celeste. Did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Shahiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. This Jihiro's track jacket really holds some clue about the killer. Somehow it's really hard to believe. Okay. So 
same set of clues. First of all, we know where Chihiro was heading. He was on his way to go exercise. True. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. I... I don't even have a tracksuit. Cause exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? What? No way. Not a chance. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? Black. No. Shoot. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. I... I don't even have a tracksuit. Cause exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit, personally. It says nothing to do with the tracksuit. Shoot! I, I don't need cause exercising. I have a white tracksuit personally. Ugh! What am I missing? Shoot! No way, no chance. Oh, like the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. Ah! Shoot! First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask... Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific track? I got it! It matched the one that- So, the killer was wearing the same blue track. There! I was overcomplicating it. I was overcomplicating it. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? what I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said- I saw him stuffing a track a track jacket into a duffel bag, and then I assume he headed off to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you? You just... Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit was? Well, because I... I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was... Is if he saw Cherry with it before he died. That's the only possibility. Cherry? Are... Are you talking about Jihiro? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hand. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... 
She stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. How? I have I had zero clue that Mondo would have been able to pull that off. Especially after what he told Chihiro. <laughs> I think for once, the hot biker dude might have dropped. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happen to refer to him as dude. <gasps> no way I missed that! Did I miss that the entire way? No! Wow! I missed that the entire way through this section. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. He didn't notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I, 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 uh, I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation! It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> My time has nearly come. That's what do you have, Hafumi? Telling me. What do you possibly have? Oh yeah, that reminds me. Hafumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. That's exactly what I expected out of you. This is why I need you to die, along with Hero, because at this point, none of the men actually matter, except for the moral cups, dude, but it's fine. Jeez, did your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Then, um, here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. You found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to... I got it! We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. Then it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. 
I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. I thought they were supposed to be like super indestructible though. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? How did the handbook break? There's only one possible explanation. I got it! You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah! You remember that? Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip. But I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? Huh. <sighs> Oh, well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will <gasps> melt down and totally break! That's what the purpose of the sauna was with the clothes on! the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna the temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees strange how you don't get burnt huh it's because as your sweat evaporates it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin if the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto that's the why he didn't have it definitely get fried that's why he was so insistent on keeping his clothes on. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Wow, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa, seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> Uh, no! No! There's been so many turns! No, 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 it certainly wasn't me. Uh, but I mean, you were awfully rattled, Taka. Could it be, you know, who... It actually was in the case in that case there could be only one person left and it could be so it is mondo then here's 
my answer. Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna. I guess why did I even select Taka in the first place? He was literally shirtless the entire time. Like it would be obvious. What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago. Remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh, no, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... But I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's five things, okay. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. Oh, shoot, no. See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! That proves that... Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, that's wrong. Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall, isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? No, because he's dead. Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student. But if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch. What's wrong, bro? Come on, tell him he's wrong. You are wrong. You have to be wrong. Everything you just said is wrong. You made it all up. Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning. That way... Everything will become clear. Okay, closing statement. Okay. Whoo! Okay, what the heck? Okay. Okay. Oh, we got stuff in the previous case, too. There's 11 pages of this. Jeez. Okay. I still cannot believe.
Wait, that's already there. Okay, we gotta get Bayakia's sector here. Right, I would think. This is where you drop that. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there, I think. We'll find out here. Oh, he already has the stuff at that point. Make the bloodlust. What? Where's the... There's the thing. And then... Is this killer shutting the door to the sauna? I think so. We'll find out. You. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chikiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time... She was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chikiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who is apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Oh, shoot. See, but it looks like Killer has it, not Chihiro has it. The killer is I you. guess we gotta keep going. With bag in hand, she made her way to the locker room. But how could the victim... No. See, like, how could she have gotten in? It's with the ID... Oh, that's her holding it. Got it. Then she gets in. Mondo's behind. Checking. She's at the door. Yeah, okay. Sorry, that took a second. With bag in hand, she made her way to the lock. But how could the victim? Simple. Because she was really a he. Which is why he was able to use his own e-handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. Ah. Uh. Unfortunate chat. It's rather unfortunate that we have to resort to this, but we have to put the pieces together here. We need a hero holding the bag or holding it in. Hurry go in. The blood lands on the poster. They're cleaning up at this point. Stairs in the girls' locker room. Then Killer uses the key to get into the girls' locker room. Okay, 
I can't tell if it looks like the girl's locker room or not. I don't think it is. I think it's the sauna. I guess we'll try it. Straps her up. Oh, that's Bayakia. Here's exactly what happened. First, let's. Last night at the time, she was a pimp. Okay. That's Act Two. In hand. She made her way to, but how could the big simple? Which is why he was able to use his once inside. It seems like and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. Okay. So it's right there where we have the big problem. So that confirms pretty much that that is the sauna. one of the there we go and that's exactly how the killer did it. with the carpet and the poster they brought with them they got to work they changed the layout of the boys and girls locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch that could have been the end of things but no Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. I was right the first time. Okay. That could have been Yakuya. No. The killer is you. That Yakuya discovered the. Oh, okay. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. 
And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the Sarn. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Awada? We've already got a lot, mister. You need evidence. You need proof. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him. The evidence of Mondo is the killer that already revealed itself earlier in the trial. All I have to do is check that one item of his and everything will be clear. A new element has been added to bullet time battles. Would you like to hear more? RP Fever Timer will activate and the tempo will be forced to max. At this point, you have to push buttons at random so you won't miss. So you can push A, Y, A, Y, however you want to destroy the opponent. It's verbal assault. But this only lasts until your focus gauge runs out. So make the best possible use of your time. And of course, it wouldn't be fair if you got access to special time, right? So we've prepared something called negative time that your opponent can use. If the opponent activates negative time during bullet time battle, the tempo marker will disappear. Quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons in rhythm. If you activate fear time, fever time at this point, no, never mind. I'm sure nothing would happen. I don't know what I was worried about. Unsurprisingly, your action difficulty is set to, if your action difficulty is set to set to gentle, which it is not, um, the opponent will not use negative time. Well then, good luck and have fun. Thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that. Wait, hold on. No waiting, no holding on. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank. Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Wow. What? Ah. 
Oh, this time it looks like you got it right again. Yes, it is so. The blackened that killed Jihiro Fujisaki was Mondo Awara. In case you were wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ihumaru. You need to be more careful. Ah, I refuse to believe it. There's no way. There's no way he would kill Sorry. someone. What, what is this? Why are you apologizing? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why? Why? Why did you do it? Now then. Well, it looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence. Please allow me to explain on his behalf. The story of the murder this time is a sad story of two men. Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the B button to fast forward the text. Anyway, there was the once a young boy. His name was Chihiro Fujizaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He's heard things like that for so long, he could, as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weaknesses. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness. To take on a fragile form of a petite young girl, he had chosen that this has his way out. Mm. No, nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. No matter how tightly we wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept that fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you do not survive. And then, the lovely, hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets! Which, of course, included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey. And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. Even if that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack and the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Even everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right now. But... but... But I also don't want to leave things the way that they are. So maybe I'll talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoying annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my I chance. Want to change. I'm going to get stronger. I am and accept who I am. Strong enough so that even when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so, that day, that day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his body and mind, but sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask somebody's help. And he wanted to tell that person a secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And that person, he went to... Yeah, that's right. It was me. Yeah. Yep, it sure was! The biker gang fella that had painfully clear how important his manually promises were. So Chihiro probably figured he would... Even if he had confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep that secret. Plus, Mr. Macho Macho was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to be. Maybe talking to Mondo about it would give me some help and some courage. So he went and asked... So he went and asked Mondo to help him to become strong. That was his aspiration. And he thought that the only way Mondo's support would he be able to ever come close to that. Correct. 
So then, that would be why Mondo did what he did. To keep a promise that he made to Chihiro. Huh? Did what he did? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um, Wasn't that to cover up what he had done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. But... But how does moving the body keep his secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So we tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook, see? Then, Mondo did all that to keep his promise he'd made to Chihiro, who he had killed. Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why, why did you? Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So he was, so that's what triggered it after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing moments and secrets exposed. What, what is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know. Even if it meant killing someone? It's impossible. Me How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standards is the height of folly. Even if he can't comprehend it, he obviously can't. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while you're on the subject... Why don't I tell you? The embarrassing memory that's secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had a chance to join the gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. Mondo's older brother, name was Daya Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he intimidated him, in, or imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, his charis charismatic older brother had put together a the logical motorcycle, the local motorcycle gang, and before anyone knew, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one of the gang, and his number two, his younger brother Mondo. The beginning, everything was peaches and gravy, but when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his uh, brother someday. His brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. <coughs> the kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone really say, or can someone like that really take over? Be, be our leader. All that do is make the king look bad. <laughs> Almost every day, almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang, which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me. I don't care what it takes. I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing... Uh, and, and on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed onto oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Laying in his kid's brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew that it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid. 
the rest is up to you. No matter what, you got to keep the game together. Because it's the team you and me put together. It's a, pro a promise between men. <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang in order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his older brother. He could never admit to anyone that he was his own that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who had bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose to his big kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation. What have what? If, uh, that became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He went to lead the team so he wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I, I just, I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong. And yet. As soon as our killing game began, he realized, no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely, hateful Monokuma announced revealing their embarrassing secrets! And at that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own brother. No matter what. I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked for to, would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt they'd been carrying around, it all would have been for nothing. And so that's why. That's why. Mondo. After I saw Monokuma had on, what a Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with kind of fuzzy uneasiness. So I started, just started swirling around. I never felt anything like it before. I, 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 just, I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say. But for a while, that fuzzy uneasiness turned itself into a hard, rock hard lump of anxiety way down in my stomach. And it was right about then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I, he told me a secret. <laughs> Seriously? Jesus! I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Because, huh? I mean, you've kept your secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would. But... You're right, but... I want to change. I wrapped myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie that I had been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. It can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? Why? You're saying if I what? really am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weaknesses and try to overcome it. And I, it was the kind of strength that I have never had. I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke what? me. Are you making what? fun of me? I'm strong. Are you fucking with me right now? No. I I'm not making fun of you. You are really strong, Mondo. I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to sit back, let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? Wrong? Why did you have to tell me all of that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, I just wanted to... No, no, I just really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I am strong. Strong, 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 stronger than you, you and stronger than Daya. I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was lying at my feet, covered in blood. 
I had a dumbbell in my hand and I was just start staring at him down on the ground. Hey, hey! I, I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive and angry. He hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in the heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. God damn it. <laughs> Look at him. You see, you're all just like him. For a secret from a p the past, for a memory, for that, he killed another living human in the cold blood. He couldn't cut free from his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know that what true strength is. Do you hope? Do you see hope anywhere in there? Because I sure don't. You bastard. Just shut up, you son of a bitch. Go ahead and say it again, I dare you. Okay, I'll say it as many times as you want. Is what I want to say, but... Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because time for punishing is fast approaching. P punishing? It can't be. You mean execution? Well, now, well, now, That's well, what it was well, promised, now. right? The black and that disturbs the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. Hold on. Now then, I've now then. A very special punishment. For Mondo Iwato, the ultimate biker gang leader. No, no, no. Wait, wait. I said, wait. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. Oh, boy. What is this punishment going to be like? Mondo has been found guilty. It's time for the punishment. Oh boy. <clears throat> Circus. The Cage of Death. Oh, Monokuma, what do you got planned? Oh my god, he's just hula in the, the background here. Okay, it's electric. Mondo butter? Oh no! <laughs> he liquidated him and be oh no! Love at death, and your soul will be forever at peace. It can't be. My brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen again. And talk of sad screams invaded our skill, our skulls. We were each focused, or forced to realize once again. But he, of course, he had to. What disappointment. This is the end of the game. <laughs> You're completely insane. And you know that a game, one of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Of course I do. Because this is a game of life or death. Hey. I don't see anything to say. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that. However, I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless. 
Like a voice of death, it chilled me to the bone. Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library per usual. So you ignored the nighttime rule, too. That rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it anyway. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. The night grew late, but I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After we'd gone inside, I saw the corpse. What? what? You mean you actually witnessed the murder? He was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I had seen him. So you're saying you knew the culprit was who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if I had, if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have an answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all of that to liven things up? I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create a fake murder scene. But but damn, man, what if we hadn't figured out who really done it? You would have been dead too, right? Well, obviously I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing on me. Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did, and I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Interesting. Once I do decide to become blackened, I now know who to watch out for. What? Correct. So that was your reason. Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes. We're done listening to your story. Moving on. Okay. There's something I'd like to ask about Akuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next. Mm. You like to perform these elaborate executions on each each time, correct? My question is why? <laughs> Do you like them? But, you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. <laughs> All this punishment, all of this despair, is my gift to mankind itself! What? You're over-exaggerating. Yeah. I'm not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair. Yeah. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? Yeah. Mean? What the heck? Mean, 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 mean! Yeah. Good grief. I don't understand why you'd have to pick apart every little stupid thing. Whatever. Doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor, and then everything will be revealed to me. Ooh, ah, the noble son of a noble family. Truly, you understand me. Bah, I think it's a start of a terrifying friendship. Shut up. I would never stoop to a level of a childish criminal like you. Let me say this. After I've achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm going to find you and kill you, understand? In the name of the Togagami family, for which victory is foregone conclusion. Oh, so cool. It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you. I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> temper, temper. Sounds like someone needs a nap. Monica was laughter pe peeled across the courtroom, and the curtains closed on the case of Shihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game will still continue, because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who are alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell that had more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it meant like it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Oh! Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Who is he talking anyway, to? Isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, It'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. 
so just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. Who the heck is Monokuma talking to? There's one thing I'd like to ask you. you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. What? My, my. You really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. There's another one? Nobody would be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> To be continued. Well, um, as long as it lets me save. I got a crazy diamond present. Yeah. In the next episode of Danganronpa, we'll be taking on the new chapter. Oh boy! We're going to have a new, a new student. I, I I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Welcome to the circle, everybody, where a new person drops in literally as soon as enough people get eliminated. See you guys then.